Hello engineers, this is video help on homework number two. On problem number one, these are questions from the back of chapter two. So they're not in the back of the book, but they're in the back of chapter two. I think the page number is 59. To understand what goes in these blanks, it gives a little bit of a description right here. And also a description of these is provided on page 40 of section 2.2. That's where the description is. The problems, I think, are on page 59. So those are ethics questions about how to so solve um, conflicts by identifying the four possible issues listed there. In problem number two, a sketch like this might help, where R is the radius of this arc defined by the stem described in the problem. D is the depth of the water. So this really goes all the way across like that. So D is the depth of the water. They tell you this distance here is 21 centimeters and that this distance right here is 10 centimeters. What you want to do is come up with two equations to solve for the unknown. The unknown is the depth, D. And that's what you want to put over here to the right using three significant figures. So D is what you're looking for over here. So how do you get that? Well, in order to solve for two unknowns, this one and this one, in mathematics, when you have two unknowns, you have to have two independent equations to solve for that unknown. So one equation is the Pythagorean theorem described right here. And what you do there is you start off just writing the equation off to the side here that would be this squared plus this squared equals that squared. So that's one independent equation. The other one is a little bit tricky to find out, but I'll help you with that now. This distance right here is r. So this is r and that's r because this is the radius of an arc. So the other equation that you can write over here is that r is equal to d plus 10 centimeters. Then you have two equations that have both r and d in there. Then you use your solve and substitute approach to solve for the depth of the water, d. That should get you going. On problem number three, my hint to you on this one is to break the uh, shape of the land up into equal squares like I have here. And then... Um, shade in, you know, using different uh, shading uh, patterns here, shade in the different uh, areas that the four brothers would have so that they have equal land areas. So see the problem statement 3.19 to understand what I'm talking about there. These are problems in the back of chapter 3. Uh, not in the back of the book, but in the back of chapter 3. On problem four, it's problem 3.25 described in the book. So these are not complete descriptions that you see here, uh, just um, initial statements and some hints along the way. So to find the number of toothpicks that you can make from a log is, is um, you take the volume of the log divided, divided by the volume of the toothpick. This is really designed to be an estimation problem, you know, with rough guesses about how big the log is. Well, no, I think they give you this, the size of the log they do give you the size of the log in um, the book. Um, but I think of the estimation part of the problem they intended to be was a toothpick, but I give you specific uh, numbers to use up here. The volume of a cylinder, so a, a log and a toothpick are estimated to be a cylinder, is pi r squared L, and that's located over here on the front page. Pi r squared L. There it is right there. Well, they use an H, so uh, R is their radius of that, and H would be the height of that cylinder. So here is R, and there is H. And so I really need to change my notation that I had over here, since I was using L for the length of the log. So instead, I'm going to use capital H to, uh, to correspond to the log, and little h to correspond to the toothpick. So there's not much left to do here. It's, you know, you can cancel out the pi, but you need to realize that every term in here uh, should probably be in feet, or all the pro all all of the terms should be in inches. What you want to do is uh, come over here and put a parentheses like that. This is kind of the method for solving engineering problem in problems. And you want to put a number in here with units and a number with units each time so that you can see which units cancel out. You may need to have a conversion factor over here so that the term comes out to be unitless. So 
make sure these are these all of these um, all four terms are in inches or all four terms are in feet otherwise you will not get the right answer here the answer should come out to be unitless so one of the things we talk about in engineering is you want to um, is the importance of units you want to make sure that you include them so that you're not off by a factor of 12 or 144 those could lead to some problems in in problem number five I kind of got you started here. You're doing the same kind of thing where you start off with a number and you read the uh, statement of the problem. I give you some assumptions to make here. And you come up with these ratios based on what the sentences say. And you want to design it so that, uh, or lay this out rather, so that there is a, a case where students cancel out here and then meals will cancel out later on. So that's the approach in unit conversion and in calculations is to have units that cancel out and always include your units in your solution so that you can keep track of them. And problem number six, you're estimating the time it takes, I think, for an aircraft to go around the, the earth. The circumference of the earth can be found on, pay, on table 3.2 of your book. That's within the chapter. And then it's, um, I think it might be traveling at Mach 1. And Mach 1 is equivalent to 340 meters per second. That is the speed of sound. And here's the, the equation for speed. It's distance divided by time. So just solve for time here. You know what the speed is and the distance is. Distance here, speed right there. And then convert all your units over to hours because it says you must express your answer in hours and also account for fueling, fueling stops as shown here. So put your answer down here in hours. Make sure you use three significant figures in your answers. And... Uh, when you submit them online as well. For this last problem, you can use speed is equal to distance divided by time. In solving for time, you get t equals distance, or time equals distance divided by speed. So that v right there corresponds to speed. All right, so you have to really read the statement of the problem to know what I'm talking about next here. The, uh, the two racers are going um, all the way over and then stopping and then coming back. And this distance that they travel is 100 yards. So they start at the start line, go 100 yards, and then come back. One of them is unaffected by wind, and that would be Larry. So I'm going to put T sub L for Larry, and it's distance travel divided by speed. But that's on the way over there and then on the way back. So we need to handle the way back as well. So here's the time it takes for Larry to get all the way across. Here's the time it takes for Larry to come back. Now Florence is uh, the other racer and um, they're affected by the wind so there's a 10 percent drop in speed for Florence when running against the wind uh, so when you, you the way that you indicate that drop in speed is like this 0.9 V so they drop they drop by a tenth of a percent in their speed that 0.9 needs to go in the denominator and then on the way back the wind helps them by 10%. So 1.1 V like that. It looks initially like there's going to be a, a tie between these two. Um, I don't think that there's going to be a tie. It may look like it, you know, that the 10% just kind of, in effect, cancel each other out. But I don't think that's the case. Um, you're looking for uh, by how much how much how many seconds uh, one wins over the other so it says you know here who wins and by how many seconds that means that you're looking for delta t delta t equals um, I guess we can just say the winner well I, you know I guess not even the winner it would be the one that takes longer um, by the one that doesn't take quite as long here so that you get a positive number for that so I can't really put the subscripts in here because I don't know what the answers are but once you get a number for these you know calculate a number for both of these put them in over here so that you get a large number here minus a small number there and you can tell uh, how they won uh, by uh, tell who won and by how much now um, make sure that you put your answers here in three significant figures and, uh, you know, when you enter these solutions online, don't include that part right there. Just include units plus the answer. Uh, units plus the uh, units, rather. So take this answer, you know, each one of these answers that you have here, 
and go over here to danbruton.com engineering 111 and submit your answers there. Hope that helps.